I've decided we've got a lot of smart kids here in the valley. We do indeed. They ask these questions and I think, <laughs> I have no idea. Right? But yeah. Well, Tonight's on water vapor. Learn something new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Roland, you're not saying much, Roland. I don't understand that. I can't wait to see the okay. question. And we were talking about this beforehand, so now I'm fascinated to hear a little bit more about this. Okay, well, let's find out what the question is. And yes, it has to do with water vapor. Our question from Star Elementary. My name is Jackson from Star Elementary. My weather question is, why does water vapor rise? Jackson, that is a great question. I remember when I was talking to Jackson, Jackson's a smart kid, I've got to tell you that. And so I think we need to talk about what water vapor is, right, Michelle? Well, water vapor, it's invisible. It's called invisible water vapor. And it's the amount of moisture in the air, the humidity. If we measure the amount of water vapor by the humidity, a hygrometer, that thing that measures humidity, a little dial you might have around your house, the amount of moisture in the air, that's humidity, water vapor, invisible. When you take air and you cool it, it will then condense the water out and become visible. That condenses into a cloud, and that's how clouds will form. And so he wants to know, Jackson wants to know, how does water vapor rise? Because when water vapor rises, as the air rises, it cools and condenses and forms those clouds. So he's wondering, how do you get it to rise? That's the key. How are you getting those clouds and the rain to form? Well, here's one way. When you look at our map, I show you that blue jet stream cruising on through. Here's a purple one right here moving up and down. When you see the jet stream dip like this, and then you see it come back from south to north, when it does that, the air in the upper atmosphere is moving apart like this. And when it does, it creates a big hole right in the middle, and you can't leave no air. You have to replace the air that's blowing away, and so the air rises from the ground. So that's one way to get rising air. When you see the jet stream like this on the east side of this line right here with the jet stream going to the north, this is where the rising air is. This is where your rain is going to be. That's where the precipitation is. The opposite happens when the jet stream goes the other way. The winds come together and it forces wind to the ground. That sinks and that dries out. So that's how we can get water vapor to rise. Down near the ground, you look at my weather map, you may see these low pressures and high pressures. High pressure, nice weather. Low pressure is generally cloudy, stormy weather and the reason for that is the wind rushes out of high pressure and sinks down to the ground. Then it goes into low pressure. It spirals to the middle. That is nowhere else to go and it gets to the middle so it rises. Again, that's your water vapor rising, cooling, condensing, making clouds and precipitation and there you go, you've got your rain falling. So you have it, even a sea breeze rolling. When the sea breeze comes in, it forces the air to rise. That warm air uh, along the coast starts to rise. All kinds of ways to yeah. make that water vapor rise. Yeah, That's how we get the clouds. Steam was vapor, was water vapor. But it's steam is actually water that has already condensed from okay. invisible water vapor. As you can see it. That's what I mean. The second graders are smarter <laughs> right. than us. <laughs> yes, they are smart. Coming up next on Fox 9.